Hey guys, today finally I have something more interesting for you. I'll be talking about the things that you have to keep in mind during the stock photography creation process. So let's start with the number one. The file needs to be saved as highest quality JPEG in RGB color mode. So no matter what kind of software you use to edit your photos, be sure that you're working in RGB mode. All today's cameras save their files in this mode, so you probably don't have to worry too much about it. But if you are a beginner, check the color mode just in case, because the photo might be in CMYK mode and you don't want that. When you are done with the photo and you want to save it, save it as JPEG file and choose the highest quality. Other formats are also acceptable, like for example TIFF or PNG, but all agencies don't accept PNG and TIFF is really big. The minimum acceptable size of the picture in megapixels varies from agency to agency. Some agencies will accept files that are only 3 megapixels big. However, since I submit to more than 10 agencies, I can tell you that 6.3 megapixels as a minimum size will be accepted everywhere. If you don't know how to check the color mode, how to save the file and how to check for its size in megapixels, don't worry about it. I'm gonna cover this in my future videos in detail. So now let's move to the second thing. Photo composition. The photo has to be framed in a way to be pleasing to the eye. What does this mean? When we talk about framing in photography, that doesn't mean putting a literal frame around the photo. Framing or composition is all about placing the main subject and other objects at the right spots, so the photo, the final result looks nice. Correct framing can be done in the camera during the photo creation process or later in the editing software. And there are rules that you can follow and these rules are proven to improve the look of the photo. One of these rules is called rule of the thirds, where the photo should be divided in nine equal parts with lines and the subject should be placed at the intersection of two of these lines. For example, I have this photo with a moth, but there is a lot of space behind the moth and that space doesn't add anything to the photo. So, since I already know about the rule of the thirds, I know that if I crop the photo like this and I imagine these lines that divide the photo to nine equal parts, my moth will in the end be exactly at the point where two of these lines intersect. And I think you agree now that this now looks much better than this. I will talk in more details about the rules of photo composition in my future videos, but if you are impatient, if you can't wait for me to make a video, I posted a couple of links in the description of this video. Just follow the link and read about it. It's not complicated, guys. In no time, you're gonna be applying these rules automatically, not even thinking about them. Number three, sharpness. Photos needs to be sharp unless the blurriness is intentional. What does this mean? This doesn't mean that the whole photo has to be sharp. As you can see on this picture, the background is very blurry, but the main subject, the butterfly, is sharp. If I turn off this layer, you're gonna see the difference between the soft and sharp and always check your photos at 100% zoom to be sure that you are doing the right thing. Again, soft, sharp, soft, sharp. There are some exceptions to this rule, for example, when you take a picture that's completely out of focus and that will serve as some kind of a background or texture, but those examples are rare. Most of the time, and for regular photos, you need to have something that's in focus. Over filtering. Filters applied should not degrade the quality of the photo. What does this mean? This means that you can apply as many filters as you want, but you have to be careful not to degrade the basic quality of the original picture. For example, on the left side we had a picture that was not really sharp, and then on the right side we tried to sharpen it with a filter, but we applied too much of it. In that case, you will see these white lines around these branches, for example, some kind of a halo. This is not acceptable. Number five, white balance and colors need to be correct. On the left side of this picture, we have a butterfly with correct white balance and colors, and the right side is obviously shifted towards the blue side of the spectrum, which is not correct and has to be corrected. 
there are exceptions to this rule, like with other rules. For example, imagine that you went to some abandoned building and you're taking pictures inside. It's really empty and sad and windows are broken and you want to accentuate the atmosphere. You can do that by adding more of blue. This way, the picture will look even colder than the real place. Or imagine that you are on the beach, it's really nice and warm, almost sunset, and then you decide to add more of yellow, orange and red to make it feel warmer. Most of the times, however, we need correct white balance and correct colors because the customers will have more flexibility to play with these and get the result they actually want. Number six, noise or grain. The picture has to be noise-free as much as possible. What does this mean? Let's see on an example. We have two sides of the image, they are both the same and they have this noise or grain that you see here as little, little dots like a texture. I'm gonna select the right side of the picture and export it to Camera Raw Filter and over there I'm gonna choose Noise Reduction tab and I'm gonna move this slider to the right and you can see how this grain disappears. Now if you compare the left side and the right side you will see that the right side is much smoother than the left side. The amount of noise on the photo really depends mainly on two factors and these two factors are very closely connected. Factor number one is the amount of light. Factor number two is the ISO setting inside the camera. So you have to have this in mind when you take pictures for stock photography. For artistic photography this is not really important, but for stock photography kind of is because photos with a lot of noise will not be accepted. So try to take pictures in good light conditions and try to use low ISO setting if you can. Number seven, copyright. Pictures have to be taken by you and free of any logos and brand names. This simply means that you cannot submit pictures that were not created by you. And also, if there were any logos or brand names on the picture, you have to remove that before submitting. This is all because of the copyright law, which is pretty complicated, and we can get into more details about it in the future videos. If you're gonna have people on the photo or private property that can be recognized by somebody, then you need to obtain a model release for people or property release for property from those people who are on the photo or from the people who own the property. This is not complicated to do. You don't have to ask random people for their signature to take a photo of them. Simply start with friends and cousins and your siblings and uh, go from there. Um, I posted a link to a general model and property release that you can use down there in the description. So you can go there, see how it looks like and use that for your photos. Number nine, no spamming. Don't use spammy words in the description or keyword section. If you took a picture of a tomato, don't put tomato 10 times in the description. Also, don't put the name of any celebrity or anything like that in the description or keyword section because first of all, you're not gonna attract customers like that and the second, the image might be deleted by the editor. And that's basically all you have to keep in mind while creating and submitting images for sale. I will be explaining all this in more details in my future videos to help you go through the whole process, but once you get a hold of it, it's gonna be very simple. If you like this video, subscribe or press the like button or put a comment, ask me questions, I'll be glad to answer and help you guys. My name is Ivan, my alias is DreamFramer, see you in the next video, bye.